Bill out into the meeting. He's on the right side of the door. It's great to see you, Doctor. Ready? Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Start. You can start. Okay. Good evening and welcome to New York City Health and Hospitals Fiscal Year 2022 Virtual Annual Public Meeting for the Borough of the Bronx. Before we start the formal program, I'd like to call to your attention that we have interpretation services if you require these services. And please call the following number, 212-788-3359 uh, where those uh, services will be available in Spanish. Good evening, my name is Bob Nolan and I'm the Bronx Borough City Council representative on the board of directors. I wanna thank you for joining us and would like to introduce the other board members who are here tonight. Uh, is our chair, Jose Pagan, here? Okay, he may be arriving later on. I see uh, our president, Dr. Mitchell Katz. Okay. Uh, I also see our city council representative for Brooklyn, Patricia Marthone. Pat, welcome. Uh, there are other members of the board who are here with us, uh, also representing uh, the Bronx, uh, Sally hernandez Pinero. Hi, Sally. How are you? And Fenioski Peña Mora. Where's Fenioski? We are waiting for him. Okay. Frida Wang, <laughs> who's a board member. We are waiting for Frida. Okay. Um, this is Calamea from City Island. Uh, from City Island. I just added another constituent, Marjorie. So Vincent Calamea was a Staten Island representative. Uh, Dr. Calamea, are you on our meeting yet? No, okay. Dr. Michael yes, McCray? Uh, Ms. Mr. Nolan, Dr. Yes. Calamere, Dr. Calamere is on. Finaski Pena Mora is on. Frida Wang, um, Dr. Martone, Sally, Jose are all on the call from the board. Wonderful. Okay. And what about Dr. Michael McCray? Dr. McCray has not joined us yet. I'd let you know as soon as he does. Okay. That finishes my list of uh, that I have in front of me here. Also on the panel, I am Shia Cohen, our Senior Vice President and General Counsel and moderator for this evening, and the incomparable Kalisha Hercules, not only Secretary of the Corporation, but our wonderful Chief of Staff. I would also like to acknowledge uh, Shelby Ventura. Ventura. Hello. 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 I'd also, I'd also, like, like, to, I'd also, I'd also like, like to acknowledge Chelsea, Shelby Ventura, Constituent Services Liaison, representing council member uh, Althea Stevens from District 16 in the West Bronx, who's participating in the listening capacity. Uh, on behalf of the board, I'd like to extend our thanks and acknowledge our facilities leadership, Dr. Christopher Roca uh, of Lincoln Hospital. Mr. Roca, are you on? Yes, Mr. Roca is on. Okay, very good, thank you very much. And Krista Mastromano in charge of Jacoby and North Central Bronx, which is now a division of Jacoby. Mr. Mastromano? Well, will I be think he's on. I... Okay, thank you very much. Um, uh, now I'm going to turn the microphone over to the president and CEO. That's the new way that we introduce Dr. Katz. So, you know, thank you. you've, you've seen thank it you. tonight. Dr. Katz, the floor thank is yours. Thank you, Mr. Nolan. Uh, thanks for being here and for always being an incredible advocate for the Bronx and for health and hospitals. Uh, we mark two years now since the start of patients being admitted with COVID-19 to our hospitals. Uh, the second year of fighting the pandemic and responding to the cycles of COVID has been extremely difficult. Our patients suffered, our families suffer, and we the healers suffer. We remember now the lives of those who are lost, those who continue to suffer from the impact of this pandemic, and honor the New York City Health and Hospitals healthcare heroes who serve New Yorkers at every stage of this pandemic. Uh, today, um, New York City went into high alert, um, the red status because of increases in the Omicron variant. 
Uh, however, I'm happy to note that for the first time, we've seen a really major decoupling. Dr. Justin, you're having a okay. audio issue. Please one second. We currently experiencing some audio issues going to our live feed on YouTube. Can you hold one minute, please? We rectifying that now. Thank you. Testing, testing. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Testing one, two, three, four, five.
Test one, two, three, four, five. Testing. Test one, two. Hello. Hi, Miss Lo. Hello. Hi, Miss Lo. Is that you? No. Good evening. This is Miss Goodwin from the Community Planning Board, Health and Human Services Chairperson. Okay, Miss Goodwin, can you please hold a minute? We having some audio issues that we are working out right now, and we sure. resume shortly. Okay. Sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Miss Sata Lo, are you on the line? Yes I'm, yes, I'm on. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Mr. Ambrose, are you on the line? Mr. Mentor, are you on the line? If you're using the phone, can you please star six and unmute yourself, Mr. Mentor? Moses from Lincoln is on the line. Hey, Miriam, this is Brenda. Hi, how are you doing? Okay. Okay, is this Mr. Mentor or Mr. Ambrose?
Okay, so hi everyone, this is Calicia. We are gonna resume with Dr. Katz's remarks. Um, right now it is not being heard on YouTube, but we would put a transcript online as soon as it becomes available. Okay, um, let me just record that. Go ahead, Dr. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for your patience with our uh, technical difficulties. Uh, right now, uh, the city moved into high alert on COVID today uh, because of rising cases. However, uh, when we look at our hospitalization numbers, I'm very pleased that there are only nine patients today in the ICU at our uh, 10 hospitals uh, with COVID. Um, there are under 80 people in the hospitals, uh, including all of the medical surgical floors, and that those people include many people who are not in the hospital because of COVID, but are have another reason to be in the hospital and were tested uh, for COVID. We test everybody on the way in. The important point is that because of vaccination uh, as well as prior exposure and maybe also differences in the circulating virus, people are not getting seriously sick very often. Uh, and the majority, while there are a lot of infections going on in New York City, the majority are occurring with sore throats, uh, runny nose, people feeling tired, uh, four or five days of symptoms, anywhere between that and completely asymptomatic. Um, so we're pleased that we uh, are not having the serious lethal consequences um, that we had in the earlier uh, cycles of COVID. We're very proud in looking over the past year at all of the ways that Health and Hospital responded uh, to the COVID pandemic, uh, we were able to uh, provide more than 10.5 million COVID tests. Um, we distributed 4 million at home tests to schools. We did more than 100,000 uh, COVID vaccinations. And each time the indications expanded, people learned that the one place where you could schedule a vaccine appointment, regardless of whether you were our patient or not, was at health and hospitals. We opened up three COVID-19 centers of excellence in Bushwick, Brooklyn, Tremont, Bronx, and Elmhurst of Queens to serve patients with long-term symptoms. And we are very aware that even for people who may have had mild illness, they may have prolonged symptoms and we are here to take care of them. Our contact and tracing team identified 1.7 million contacts. We helped 33,000 people isolate at a quarantine hotel. We are the only city in America that had quarantine hotels uh, to help people who uh, had been exposed to keep them from exposing others. We provided 2.2 free meals to those in isolation or quarantine. We walked their dogs. We uh, picked up their medicines at the pharmacy. We did whatever was necessary in order to keep people safe. Through our Test and Trace Corps, we launched the show mobile vans, of which we now have eight, um, to cover 119,000 uh, 119, unique New Yorkers. It's worked very well as a method of outreaching to people who are living on the street, and yet by having the van, we're able to have them uh, in a setting that is private and enables us uh, to dress wounds and take care of other things that are simply uh, not possible um, in other settings. Uh, moving to Bronx News, we uh, received approval from the state uh, to combine Jacoby and North Central Bronx hospitals under one operating certificate. We are very proud of both hospitals um, and they both independently are campuses within this uh, single operating 
uh, certificate. Um, we, it has allowed us to provide much better care in a number of ways, especially um, we are able now when patients are in the emergency department in Jacoby, when there are no available hospital beds for admission, we're able to move them to North Central Bronx and guarantee them a much better experience. So um, we're very pleased at, at the great strength that these two hospitals bring to their now combined operating certificate. Um, in, in the last year, Chris Roker took the helm at CO, as CEO of New York City Health and Hospitals. He had previously uh, been the CEO of Queens and Metropolitan Hospital, both places where he did a, a wonderful job. A U.S. News and World Report ranked out three hospitals in the Bronx as high-performing, and we are very proud of them. Our three hospitals in the Bronx also received national recognition by the American Heart Association for their commitment to ensuring that patients with heart disease receive the most appropriate treatment. Uh, we opened two new health centers dedicated to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning queer patients in the Bronx. Um, one is at Jacoby, um, and one is at Lincoln. Um, and uh, then uh, in late January, uh, the Department of Defense sent a medical team to support our heroic healthcare workers at NCB in the fight against the, the COVID-19 uh, Omicron variant, and we are very grateful to them uh, for all that they did. Uh, in February, the governor visited the hospital along with Representative uh, Aspilat and Bronx Borough President Vanessa Gibson, Council Member Eric Dinowitz, to thank the Department of Defense for working side by side with our staff. I'm very much looking forward to hearing with our many public speakers. Bronx is extremely important to us. Um, we have great hospitals in the Bronx and uh, always feel a tremendous commitment to taking the best care of people in the Bronx. Thank you. Great. Um, thanks so much. I am Andrea Cohen. I'm Senior VP and General Counsel, and I'll be moderating the rest of tonight's program. Can you all hear me? Hopefully, yes. yes. Okay, good. Thank you for the nods. Um, all right. So um, as you may have noticed, um, due to the COVID-19 public gathering restrictions, um, we are convening this public hearing um, for the Borough of the Bronx virtually. This is the fourth in a series of five meetings that we conduct annually across the city's five boroughs. The purpose of these annual meetings is to inform the public on the programs and plans of New York City Health and Hospitals. You just heard from Dr. Katz for that uh, purpose of the meeting. Um, and now for the remainder of the um, program, our goal is to hear from you, the public, um, about, um, about New York City Health and Hospitals uh, performance and plans um, over the last year and for the future. Uh, all public testimony, however, it's provided, whether orally this evening or in writing um, later, um, will be presented to our entire board. Um, and of course, we have many members of our board listening this evening um, live as well. Um, I just wanna highlight uh, at this moment, the format and rules for testimony. Um, the most important thing to understand, and of course it's difficult to do virtually anyway, um, the members of our board are here to listen to you um, and your comments, not to engage in a dialogue. So this will be a listening session for our board only, not a question and answer forum. Um, I'll be calling on each speaker. Um, so when it is your turn to speak, listen for your name. Um, please be aware that when your name is called, you will receive an unmute request on your device. Um, plus, press the unmute icon on your device, or if you're on a phone, please press star six. Um, if you have difficulty, I'll try to uh, restate these instructions again when it's um, your turn. Um, be especially because we are getting a little bit of a late start tonight. Um, registered speakers always are allotted five minutes of speaking time. I will be a little tighter on our timelines today. So as soon as you see the timer on your screen, turn from green and then to yellow when you have two minutes left, and then to red 
um, I will interrupt you when it hits red and ask you just to finish your sentence, maybe not even your whole thought, just your sentence, um, and conclude your remarks. And anything you haven't had a chance to say, you can submit in writing. And again, it will be shared with absolutely all members of our board. Um, uh, and um, I will be pronouncing some names that I haven't seen before. If I pronounce it incorrectly, please correct me when you start off. I won't uh, count that against your time um, uh, because we wanna, we wanna know who you are and say it correctly. Thank you so much for your participation. This is so important to us and we look forward to hearing from you. And now we will hear from our first presenter. Sorry, I have to switch devices here, who is uh, council member Marjorie Velasquez. Um, with uh, the New York City Council, of course, District 13. Thank you so much. Hi, good evening, everyone. And uh, thank you for hosting this event. Uh, for me, it's important that we all have an opportunity to speak, right, and to listen. Um, and more importantly, uh, that we work together for common goals for our community. Um, one of uh, the most pressing issues um, for us uh, is also gun violence, which is a healthcare crisis um, that our communities are facing, especially with what happened um, just yesterday with poor Kiara. Um, this is something that uh, Jacoby has addressed um, through their SUV group. And I you know, want to commend them and, and amplify and say, thank you. Thank you for having them and thank you um, for working together. I've been out with them in the streets. I've seen their work firsthand and um, it definitely uh, works for the community. And I'm looking forward um, to continuing conversations and expanding um, and whatever that funding looks like, having honest conversations with you all on it. As you well know, we're in the middle of the budget season in the city council. So having those conversations about needs, whether they're capital or expense, is, is very important to us too. So that way we can work together to address the larger issues within our communities, whether it is um, the rise of COVID, and how we can best prepare our communities through mobile vaccine sites throughout our NYCHA facilities, throughout um, not only NYCHA, but through our senior centers, um, using every measure through our communities to be the best in outreach. And uh, lastly, it's the good work of our doctors and our nurses and all our medical staff at uh, our Jacoby Hospital who have kept up us up and alive, um, our frontline workers, and we need to comm commend them and we need to respect them, make sure that we're doing proper safe staffing um, and also that we are listening and providing um, mental health experts for them, especially after the Jacoby shooting, making sure that we're taking uh, what they're saying seriously um, and not waiting for uh, a negative event like that uh, to take more uh, safety precautions. So thank you all. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for your remarks. Um, our next speaker is Samantha Cardenas. She is the chief of staff representing council member Pierina Sanchez um, with the New York City Council District 14. Andrew, Samantha. this is Bob Nolan. The, the council member I was told about two hours ago is on a six o'clock Zoom meeting and will try to join us later on. I'm gonna get a phone call from her chief of staff. And when she calls me, then I'm going to call Kalisha, and Kalisha will let you know that she can you can bring on the council member at that point if we're still having our hearing. Thanks so much, Mr. Nolan. Okay, we'll move on to the next speaker. Great. Mm -hmm. um, so the next speaker is Esme Satower Lowe, the um, Community Advisory Board Chair for North Central Bronx. Esme Satower Lowe. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening to Dr. Katz. Thanks for your report. I'm going to be very, 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 very short. My name is Esme Saturlu. I represent the Community Advisory Board at North Central Bronx Hospital. I'm the chairperson. First, I want to thank the NYC Health and Hospital Health System for facilitating the space, acknowledge and highlight the dedication and service provided by the employees at North Central Bronx. The quality care they offer to the re resident in the Bronx community. Also, thank you, the CAP members, for being on the leadership and very resilient to every one of the meetings. Mr. Mashramano, the CEO, Dr. Chinero, the Deputy Chief Medical Officer, Neil Phillips, the CNO, and the Public Affairs Department. 
The past two years have been difficult with deadly pandemic and a surge in violence nationwide despite the many obstacles the NYC Health and Hospital at North Central who represent the care professional remain responsive and vigilant. They provide the COVID-19 vaccine testing service and community outreach to meet the top priority. They modified the hospital visitation policy and implemented entry screening protocols and other emergency preparedness strategy to keep the patient and employees safe and healthy. Some of the significant issues that impact the Bronx community in this facility, the catch make area include crime and public safety, healthy health literacy, food insecurity, mental health, Sigma and financial security. Thank you for your time and attention and have a blessed evening. Thank you so much for your comments. Our next yeah. speaker is Ngande Ambroz, who is the uh, Community Advisory Board Chair for Lincoln Hospital. Are you able to unmute? Unmute on your device or star six on a phone. Ngande Ambrog. Okay, I'm going to circle uh, that speaker and move on to the next one. Um, next speaker is, um, and we will return, Ileana Almanzar, uh, the Community Advisory Board Chair of Belvis. Um, and the Community and Government Affairs Liaison for the Bronx for Live on New York. Ileana Almanzar. Please unmute your device or star six if you're on a telephone. Okay. Um, I know we've been delayed, so we may have lost some people. I'm going to keep moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, Ms. Uh, um, Miriam uh, Moses, auxiliary Moses. president, Lincoln Hospital. Miriam Moses. Miriam Moses. Good evening. This is Miriam Moses. Terrific. I Thank am you. chair of Lincoln Hospital Auxiliary. I would just like to acknowledge the excellent care that I feel that New York City Health and Hospitals offer to our communities. My one regret is that all persons who would like to partake of the services that are provided by the different hospitals cannot if they do not have Medicaid or the One Health Insurance that uh, the hospitals honor. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, next speaker is Jose Itie. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, CAB member for North Central Bronx. Jose Ithier. Okay, we'll move on. Um, next speaker is Brenda Goodwin, a CAB member for Lincoln Hospital. Hello. Hello, can you Hello. hear me? Yes, is that Jose? Yes. Okay, go, uh, go right ahead. Um, and Brenda, oh, I'll, I'll return to you. Thank, thank you very much for allowing me to speak as the co-chair of North Central Bronx Hospital. Uh, it's been very near and dear to me throughout many years. Uh, I have to congratulate the joint venture of bringing Jacoby and North Central team to work together to improve a lot of the areas uh, within the hospital. 
Uh, I have to congratulate our leader, Chris Nostromano, and the whole team that he's put together uh, at North Central. I know for an experience the work that has been put together by the staff. I must highlight the COVID-19 testing, the vaccination, the process that went through that, where many, many people were going to North Central, and they even put out an outdoor uh, tent to take over the overflow from the inside. We have a lot of issues in the area, as ESME, our chair, has highlighted from crime and public safety, the shootings that have been happening, you have been reading and seeing it in the news. The health literacy, how we must get out there from seniors to young people to teach them about the importance of coming and dealing with the hospital and not be afraid. The food insecurities in our neighborhoods, the mental health that has risen during the time of the COVID. Many people who have been locked in uh, indoors for so much uh, time, we need to deal with that. And the financial security of people who did not return to work or lost their job, and they're afraid to come into a hospital because it costs money or something. We are dealing with all those issues and we thank our team for all the work that they do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your comments. Um, we will now move on to the next speaker, Brenda Goodwin. Good evening, everyone. My name is Brenda Goodwin. I am the Health and Human Services Chair from Community Board 1. I bring you greetings from my chairperson, Arlene Parks. I will be short and brief. I would like to take this time to thank Health and Hospitals Corporation for the work that they're doing in our community. As most know, our community has been inundated with so much issues, but thank God that we have a hospital in our community who is trying their best and doing their best to meet our needs. I thank Mr. Katz, I thank Mr. Roker, I thank the, every employee at Lincoln Hospital for the job that they are doing. We are clearly seeing a betterment in our community. I thank Ms. Oliver and Mr. Montalvo of Public and Community Affairs. Every request that we have made in order to make our community a betterment, they have went out their way to meet it. I thank Mr. Marcello for doing outreach in our community, for being on our board at the planning board and servicing our needs as well. Thank you all. Keep us in mind. As anybody knows, we are in need down here, and we thank God that we have a hospital, we have an HHC person who is looking out for us and meeting those needs. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your comments. Our next You're welcome. speaker, thank you. Um, our next speaker, speaker is Richard Izquierdo, uh, CAP member for Lincoln Hospital. Richard Izquierdo, if you uh, can hear us, please unmute your device or star six on your phone. All right, can okay. you hear us now? Yes. All right, yes. there you go. All right, I'm good. Rich, is that you? No, it's not here. Okay, he's not here. Yes, Richard, he's probably on a line elsewhere. Okay. And then have her go back to Ambrose. Is is Ambrose go back, available yeah, now? Go back to Ambrose. Yes, I'm here. Okay. okay, why don't you go ahead now? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, welcome to um, Lincoln Hospital. Uh, my name is Gandhi Ambrose, the chair of Community Advisory Board, Lincoln Hospital. Uh, Lincoln Hospital has been working closely with uh, with the hospital administration to better serve our community. Together, the administration and the CAP have been working to advocate, reach out to the community to provide 
more support, education, and preventive care. More resources are needed to achieve our goals. We are presently holding the number one place in the nation in trauma care and stroke. That is why this, is, this, this new administration under the leadership of Mr. Christopher Rocker, our new CEO come up with a new initiative to build a 10 storage ambulatory care pavilion to expand um, our medical services. We are looking forward to our new facility to better serve our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I am gonna move on to the next speaker, uh, Mariano uh, Laboy, a cab member for Morrisania. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, good evening. Uh, we, we want to work on you uh, to the Bronx, to the mainland. My name is Mariano Laboy, I'm the uh, vice chair for Morrisania. Uh, we have uh, the largest federally qualified healthcare center in the Bronx serving a community of the poor congressional district and county. We will provide services for over 40 years. We are leading right now in a system in both the high blood pressure and diabetes control, two commodities that are affecting our population. However, this is in order to provide better service to our community, Morisania needs funding for a new equipment in the dental department to maintain and expand our services, including new dental chair. We need new facility repair, including replacement of elevator and roof. We need new radiology equipment, specifically ultrasound machine. Shortest of providing adult medicine, primarily at OBGIN, uh, leading to the late appointment for new patients and nurses issue. We have shortage of nursing staff. We need more funding for recruiting and retention of nurses. It has been difficult to recruit nursing staff during our pandemic, our, because nurses are demanding COVID. One of the issues of concern for the CAP members is the following, and I hope the uh, central office to look into this. CAP members application that we sent about six months ago it's still pending for approval. We need, this issue has to be expedited. We have a new team of very young and energetic uh, 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 staff, uh, including Dr. O'Connell, Mr. Santos. So I'm working very hard in order to provide, but we need your help. Remember, we are here to help you. Let's work together. Like in the past, we have received uh, fundamental services from the central office, but our needs are immediate. But specifically on the board members, we urge you to uh, look into this issue because it's a very, very imperative. And to the uh, elected official, please don't forget the Helen Hospital Corporation. We need the funding in order to provide uh, better services to our community. Remember that for the past 20 years, the bronze have been in hell at the bottom of the 62 counties in the, in, in the state. We had to improve, we had to change that stigma in order to provide this is for the elected official to provide better funding for all of us. We want to thank you very much for your cooperation. We're looking forward to help you and in order for you to help us. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night, thank you so much for your comments. Uh, our next speaker is Carmen Aquino, a CAB candidate for Lincoln Hospital. Carmen Aquino, if you could unmute your device or star six if it's a telephone. Carmen Aquino. Okay, I'm gonna move on and come back. Um, Good evening now? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, hi, right good ahead. evening. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to thank uh, everyone and thank especially uh, and 
uh, I'm talking on the support of Lincoln Hospital. Lincoln Hospital has been, uh, for me, it's very important. Uh, I feel they saved my life three years ago when they find out that I have high blood pressure. Since then, I'm taking medication and I'm, you know, I can work. Uh, uh, thanks God. And also, I work in the school, in the education, and also because of this, our families. Uh, they can take their children and they can get their physicals. They can get tested pediat pediatrics. It department is very important in our community. So I hope that the members of the elected officials and the representative can uh, give the support to Lincoln and uh, all the clinics uh, that help to help our community and our constituents. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you very That's much all. for your comments. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, our next speaker is Sean Petty. Um, he is a nurse and with the New York State Nurses Association, Sean Petty. Sean, I think you're still on mute. Uh, if you're on a device, which I think you are, yeah, there you go. Gotcha. Um, thanks for thanks for uh, um, the opportunity to speak. Uh, I am the president of Nisna Jacoby, and um, I think I can safely speak uh, for my colleagues um, at Lincoln Hospital and at NCB um, because you know we've we're we're in fairly you know, constant communication and and definitely share the bulk of, of these viewpoints. Um, I, you know, I, I do think that there is a number of things that, that are impressive about um, what health and hospitals has been able to do throughout this pandemic. Um, it reveals to, I think, everyone how critical the public hospital system is to healthcare in this city. Um, I think, you know, I've been a nurse in the pediatric ER at Jacoby for 15 years, and I hope to be there for 15 more. And I am, you know, you know, very committed to, you know, my department and my hospital and, and health care in this borough. Um, but I do want to echo some sentiments. Um, Council Member Marjorie Velasquez and, and some other. Um, uh, some of this we are still facing that the Bronx did suffer disproportionately during the COVID crisis, and we do uh, we do need to set our sights on a significant expansion of healthcare needs uh, for the Bronx. I think that there have been some increase in increases at the state level, at the federal level. In terms of funding, a little bit at the city level, um, but I think the the scale of the crisis is still we're still not catching up to uh, the nature of some of uh, these partic the particular elements of these crises. I think people have mentioned the mental health care crisis. Um, that is very apparent to us uh, in the emergency departments and the psychiatric departments at Jacoby. Uh, we have. Um, we have been in discussions and, you know, with Dr. Katz, uh, with the mayor um, in the wake of the shooting at Jacoby around a whole series of workplace violence uh, measures um, that have been implemented. And we appreciate the, the open ear and the, the quick response to some of our concerns. I think there's still a significant amount of work to be done. And I think that, you know, there is an omnipresent threat. Just last week, we had um, uh, some, uh, we've had a, a group of people enter the um, actual emergency room seeking out uh, a victim of violence for unknown reasons. They were intercepted uh, before um, any incidents ensued, but um, they were able to obtain access to inside the emergency room. Uh, so we still have some pretty significant issues that um, are not, we're not, you know, we're not there yet in terms of, uh, in terms of developing the safe hospital that, that we need to, we need to have in this 
current present situation. And that sort of dovetails with a broader issue, <clears throat> which I think I pretty much can safely say, I think the, the most significant issue facing healthcare for people in the Bronx right now, uh, and, and I think this can go for other boroughs uh, as well, is um, nurse retention. Right now, nurse retention is at an all time uh, at all time critical level. It is not. Um, we have had more departments with much less than fifty percent of the nursing staff with more than a couple years of experience. So that is um, what that means is that there is a. a profound brain drain of the ability for um, the people that are caring all throughout our system uh, for patients, their ability to provide effective care, safe care, care that um, uh, uh, compassionate care, because you can't provide compassionate care if you're not providing safe care, if you're not, um, if, if you don't know um, if you're not proficient in the technical aspects of our job, if um, if you're not well trained, we have agency nurses training new graduates um, in our system in, in quite a widespread way. Uh, we have a. Sean, can I ask you to just conclude your remarks? We're over time. Yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to put in the last thought about the profound nature of the of the nursing retention crisis and the need to uh, meet that at the economic level at the safety level and at the the level of dignity thanks thank you very much for thank your you. comments thank you um our next speaker is um Lynette, um benoit a counseling coordinator at um, bariqua college Lynette or Lynette, I'm not sure, uh, Benoit. Just a quick reminder, if you are on, unmute your phone or star six, star six if it's a phone, unmute if it's a device. Okay, um, we'll come back. Uh, next speaker is Chris Norwood, Executive Director of Health People. Um, I assume you can hear me. Hello. Yes. Okay. Hello. I never believe the machine somehow. Uh, good evening. I'm Chris Norwood, Executive Director of Health People, which is an entirely peer educator driven Bronx disease prevention and self care organization. I am also co founder of Communities Driving Recovery. Thank you for your kind attention. As we all know, New York City is facing an unprecedented health crisis with infectious disease that makes chronic disease worse, while our high levels of chronic disease, especially diabetes, drive infectious disease. We have levels of mass illness actually not seen for a century. This requires that all institutions rethink what health is and how we can have a recovery from COVID which brings wellness and hope to our shattered communities. Our whole city appreciates the heroic role of H&H &H and its frontline workers in fighting COVID-19. But what is not as widely realized is that with H&H &H in the lead in partnership with DOHMH, the city laid the basis for a powerful new way to fight disease overall during COVID. That basis is T2, originally standing for test and trace, a program which involved the city contracting with a wide range of community groups and instituting a community advisory board to advise its efforts. It represented a major, major step forward where for the first time there was real infrastructure which enabled DOH, MH and H&H and, &H and community groups to work together. The combined efforts had outstanding results. You heard Dr. Katz mention some of them earlier. We never went through again the terrors of the first COVID wave. We had the highest testing rate of any city in the country, and now we have an 82% rate of vaccination, or at least first shot, with poor neighborhoods now catching up with and sometimes surpassing other areas of the city. 
That's why we are urging H and H to use this extraordinary ses success to think through our overall approach to recovery and especially to restoring community wellness. Let's all work to keep the T2 infrastructure, particularly the community advisory board, so we have the means to continue to seriously plan together. Communities driving recovery is a citywide co CBO coalition. We want to work with H and H as we did during the worst of the pandemic to now proceed to the most effective and sustainable recovery. Uh, I'll give an example right now, for example, despite the disaster of diabetes, I doubt H and H is supporting any diabetes self-management groups at accessible community locations where their patients with type two diabetes could readily learn proven self-management. You need to root that kind of chronic disease education in all communities. There is past success as a model. During DISRIP, h and supported a diabetes self-management program, which helped people took right into homeless shelters. Uh, DOH evaluated this and taking this right to homeless shelters resulted in slashing emergency room visits by 45% in six months, a boon not only to the patients, but to h and in starting to relieve the terrible pressure on the front lines in emergency rooms. There are many other things that are needed. I think, whoops, what happened? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, I'll keep talking. We can't, we can't see you. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, uh, you know, in, including um, low threshold mental health, doulas, I know you have an in-house doula program, but doulas in the community, a uh, peer specialist, you had a demonstration project some years ago, extraordinary results with peer specialists with people with combined chronic disease and behavioral health. What is needed simply cannot be accomplished by clinical centers alone. We are requesting to meet with H&H, &H, uh, Community mm -hmm. Driving Recoveries is requesting, and actually we will send a formal request to Dr. Cass to start establishing a process for H and H to as productively incorporate community groups into the recovery as they were incorporated into fighting the epidemic. Most of all, especially given H and H's accomplishments during the pandemic, let us not just stop. Let us go forward on a new road of community partnership that works, that creates health, local jobs, and above all, healing. Thanks very much for your comments. Uh, we will now move on to our next speaker, Cody Soufrant, a director at Bariqua College. Cody Soufrant, if you are on unmute your device or star six on your phone. Mm -hmm. Are you on? Okay, uh, I'm gonna move on to the next speaker. Next speaker is Epi Adams. Please correct me if I said that wrong. Assistant Director for Community Affairs for the Neighborhood Association for Intercultural Affairs. Hi, good afternoon. And Welcome. thank you so much for having me. Um, I am here First of all, I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you to all of you for doing such an amazing, amazing job for our community. And I am here to briefly speak about our, our services at NICA. And what we do at NICA is that we provide legal services and financial assistance for um, families and individuals in the Bronx that need help in their, with their Bronx housing court cases. And we also work with the Emergency Rental Assistance Program, ERAP, and help with a variety of cases and, uh, and applications for grants. We connect our clients with case managers that help them protect themselves with a legal team that is very capable and uh, social services case managers that help them apply for different programs. And we all know that our community has been hit with a lot of instability due to this pandemic. And this is one thing that we can help alleviate, which is housing stability 
and I am leaving my information in the chat and our um, EVRAP hotline in case you encounter individuals that need help with applications for EVRAP and also our legal department hotline in the event, in the event that you have any uh, patients or clients, constituents that need help uh, with legal services to protect their home. This is a team effort. We're trying to work all together to avoid mass eviction and protect our communities from homelessness. Um, once again, my information will be in the chat. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much for your comments. Um, and thank you for your, your information now in the chat. Thank you. Um, I wanna thank, we're, we're at the end of our speaker list. I wanna thank everybody who participated and spoke um, about New York City Health and Hospitals. Wish you all a good evening uh, and a safe, safe night, safe journey home if you have one. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Everybody. Have a great evening. Take care. Be well. Yeah. Thank you.